The waters of baptism Johnny died with Christ and rose with him to new life. May he now share with him eternal glory.
mighty good. She wouldn't wait for the harvest. I thought we should. We were drinking more in those days. Our tempers we eat so much. I can pull like that ladder on my way when she went the wrong ditch. I'm the last I had, she's another off. Back in the dark, we meet. Walking away, or sitting on top of the roof, falling her feet. But they say that she got money once to a man called Romany Brown. Even the gypsy tower of man is too much like settling down. They say a road is a city. Whether I'm hard to lose Maybe that's the price you pay for the chains that you refuse She was a rare thing As fine as a beast when I miss her more than the worst can say I can just taste All of her wildness now If I could hold her in my arms today the ones around me on the way. Son and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Good morning. You're very welcome as we gather on this sad morning to offer this last happy place of soul for Johnny Buddha. We come here today for Johnny. The Lord will be well with his love and his care and his all that he was in this life. We present it and offer it to God. As we pray for him, we are here to use the love of our family, the life and the tears, the love of children, the jewels of his eyes, <coughs> his brothers, PJ, David, sisters Anne, Tina, Bernadette, and Jackie, and Regina, his brother and father in law, Helen, and Mike, the extended family, his brother and all sister in law's nieces, and nephews, and relatives, all the many, many friends and good colleagues. We are welcome to gather on the Sabbath. We are not only God, and though we might like things to be different, things to be a different way, we trust that with God there is life, there is eternal life. And that's what we pray for Johnny today. The best thing now is just love the parents, Martin Mary, Sister Dixie, Sister Mary Dudley, it seems every Christian. They will be at peace in the mansion of God's paradise. So we come down here. John was such a big part of person in big life. So Jenny's going to come forward to the gym. So who is it? If he gives the symbol that John is out from the back and pick him up. The digger is going to the back. There's a few eyes across. We get the names of the young people. Taylor, John, Emma, Ivy, Mom. Taylor brings a family photo from which John is a devoted family man, a devoted father, and a loving husband.
high frequency stores are to simulate, simulate strong cells from machinery. John's cracks. If you knew John, you would love his cracks. And if you didn't like them, he wouldn't be, would be long for burning. <laughs> John brings John to our roots, which signals the hard work of man he was and his love for the land. the Christian symbols to know the followers of Jesus from the gospel of Christ. It's all place of God, in which we put our hope and trust and stay praying in Christ may preach John that the world's eternal life come, yes, but my father. In the baptism of the here in the church, John was christened and signed with the sign of the cross. We are going to be sharing Christ's victory over sin and death. And we believe that all the ties of friendship and affection, which make us together as one throughout our lives, is not an hour of death. So confident that God always remembers the good we have done and forgives our sins. We pray that's the God to gather John to himself. We raise the dead to life and spirit. Lord, have mercy. We bring pardon and peace to the sinner, Christ hath mercy. And we bring light to those in darkness, Lord hath mercy. And then we bring God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who art the mercy of sinners and the happiness of your saints, give we pray to your servant John, who today we perform the fraternal offices of prayer, a share with your chosen ones in the blessedness you give. So that on the day of resurrection, Free from the bonds of mortality, he may come before your face. For the Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. So now we have our first and uh, second reading. It's so powerful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. Grace and mercy are the chosen of God. The virtuous man, though he died before his time, will find rest. Length of days is not what makes age or good, nor a number of years yet the true, nor a number of years the true measure of life. Understanding, this is man's gray years. Untarnished life, this is ripe old age. He has sought to please God, so God has loved him. As he was living among sinners, he has been taken up. He has been carried off so that evil may not warp his understanding or treachery to his soul. For the fascination of evil throws good pains into the shade, and the whirlwind of desire corrupts a sinful heart. Come to perfection in so short a while, he achieved long life. His soul being pleasing to the Lord, he has taken him quickly from the openness and Yet people are not uncomprehending. 
It does not enter their heads that grace and mercy await the chosen of the Lord and protection, his holy ones, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Colossians, we shall stay with the Lord forever. We want you to be quite certain, brothers, about those who have died, to make sure that you do not grieve about them, like the other people who have no hope. We believe that Jesus died and rose again, and it will be the same for those who have died in Jesus. God will bring them with him. We've been telling this from the Lord's own teaching that any of us who are left alive until the Lord's coming will not have any advantage over those who have died. At the trumpet of God, the voice of the archangel will call out to command, and the Lord himself will come down from heaven. Those who have died in Christ will be the first to rise, and then those of us who are still alive will be taken up in the clouds together with them to meet the Lord in the air. So we shall stay with the Lord forever, with such thoughts as these, you should comfort one another. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So let you stand as we read our gospel. <clears throat> Glory to praise to you, O Christ. I am the resurrection of the Lord, says the Lord. Whoever believes in me will never die, says the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. The Lord be with you. In the reading of the gospel according to John. Martha said to Jesus, If you have been here, my brother would not have died, but I know that even now, that every mask of God, he will grant you. Your brother, said Jesus to her, will rise again. Martha said, I know he will rise again at the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. If anyone believes in me, even though he dies, he will live, and whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? Yes, Lord, she said. I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, the one who has come into this world. Gospel of the Lord. The first reading reminds us of the virtuous man who died before his time to find rest. For grace and mercy await the chosen of the Lord. That is our prayers, our faith, is our reason for gathering here this morning around John's heartbroken family. This promise of the Lord to raise the resurrection and the life becomes our prayer for John. Though he has gone too soon, leaving a lifetime to live. We gather in hope, because we can hope in God's word, for God never betrays us nor deceives us. So there is great sadness here this morning. There is a lot of pain and darkness. As we gather today to pray for Johnny, the sport is beloved by Fabian, his children, his heartbroken family. If God is for us, St. Paul tells us, that nothing can go against us. Nothing can come between us and the love of God and the visible of Jesus. Nothing separates us from God, even death. No matter how dark the situation, no matter how distant we become from God, He is still there loving us, our life and our hope, our help. His soul, in hope and hold, hold firm and take heart and hope in God. I mentioned the other day, Wednesday, for the beloved Mother Ivan's funeral, Ivan had a great devotion to St. Jude, patron saint of hopeless cases. My family got a smile on their face. One thing was a bench she was talking about, but I decided no, it wasn't. <laughs> it was that no matter how difficult, she trusted that there was no such thing as a hopeless case or situation, because God was in it. There was always hope. So hope in the Lord. I know for this family now it's a difficult time. The loss of someone we love cuts deep in our soul. Someone once wrote, we grow to know this world as such a pain and such a loss. We carry and suffer by the cross. The cross of Christ is at the entire centre of our Christian lives. It is both the pain and the anguish in our lives, and still it is our hope and our salvation. 
Christ in his victory over sin and death, to celebrate his coming week on Easter. He went for us through this cross. And all God's beloved children turn our life. It is because of the cross of Christ and his sacrifice that nothing can come between us and the love of God. And so as we gather in the numbness and the brokenness of this time, we lean on God, who holds baby and Alfred and Taylor and Johnny's brothers and sisters and the family close to his heart. Like you held him over the last few months. Held him when he was in pain. And he was despairing. Holding him close to your heart. The boy's sickness with great dignity and great strength, fitting his life dreams of making him his life. Although he was hanging on, hoping the chiefs would be asking on the 29th of February in the VP of this year, but that his patience got the better of him and got him first. But four weeks ago, today, he gave it his everything. And he became he his husband and he became his wife. He still held, I think, on that day the, the title he held for many years at the centre of life and, life and soul of the party. He didn't give up. And of course, the chairman of the day that day was meeting, walking into the Dolman Hotel, who was sitting there on the travelling there, tumbling pass. Which was better, the wedding or meeting the tumbling <laughs> 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 And of course, he would really see them. Probably was that was the real crew. A dozen hospitals. They knew you were his world. Of course, you wanted him to be with you for many, many more years. In the last 12 years, you were his life and his contentment. A dozen and wonderful father to Alfie and Taylor, his world was complete. He worked hard all his life and lived life to the full. The poet Holden describes a holy picture of resurrection. He goes, Is it true after this life of ours that one day we shall be awakened by a terrifying clamor of trumpets? Forgive me, God, but I console myself at the beginning resurrection of all of us dead will simply be announced by the crowing of the cock. After that we will remain lying down for a while. The first to get up will be mother. We'll hear her quietly laying the fire, quietly putting the kettle on the stove, and closely taking the teapot out of the cupboard. We'll be home once more. It's a wonderful image of heaven, of a home and a table, of meeting and reunion. Speaks of the love by which God welcomes home his children and receives them into his home and gives them eternal life and peace and joy. But also a sense of home on Wednesday as Johnny left this world. Again, as his family gathered here for the love of Mother Ireland's funeral, the first thing we brought up was the teapot. Box of Barry's tea. The kettle was on. So here in the comfort of heaven, reunited with his beloved parents, Packman and Mary, sisters, Pixie, Mary, and Ever Christian, Never Christian. <coughs> so they will stay with the Lord, as the scripture reminds us. So we shall stay with the Lord forever. And again, St. Paul reminds us with such thoughts <coughs> as these. Let us comfort one another. But even in the pain of loss, the sadness of death, there is hope. It is not the end of the story. But the story is written with God, and it never ends. And here, at the table of the Lord, with those he loves that have come before him, may Johnny experience this homecoming and live in peace with God in eternal life. Amen. <coughs> Thank you.
So those who praise the faithful, <laughs> not come up. Let's make a charm that you have to do this. Do you have a small little meeting? Thank you. I invite the rest of you to stand. <clears throat> Father, our Almighty Father has raised Jesus, his son, from the dead with confidence now we ask him to save all his people, living and dead. We pray for all those who are close to us by the burden of illness and despair that Christ may give you relief from the present pain and courage to face the people of hope for the us. Lord, we should hear us. As we say farewell to Johnny, we remember all who have gone before him, especially Ayla, Happy, Christian, and Pixie. And all our relatives and friends, give them all eternal lives, O oh Lord. Lord, please hear us. We pray for all those who cared for Johnny, especially Amy, Abby, and Taylor. May Johnny always be by their son, Lord, hear us. Lord, please hear us. We pray for all who mourn for Johnny, especially Amy, <coughs> Abby, and Taylor. Have them come to terms with his own and did to my dreams, Lord, hear us. Lord, please hear us. For all those whose lives are enriched by the memories of Johnny and who gave thanks for the blessings received and shared through Johnny's love and the love of others, Lord, hear us. Lord, For all who feel crushed by the burdens of life, especially those with heavy crosses to bear, strengthen their weary arms and steady their tumbling knees, Lord, hear us. God, our shelter and our strength, be listening well to the cry of your people. <coughs> Hear the prayers we offer for our departed brother. Grant him the fullness of redemption and cleansing of sin. And may he live in your kingdom of peace and happiness forever. As we make all our prayers in faith and trust through Christ our Lord. Amen. So we see you now. And Eugene and Debtor continue to get our bread and wine.
We hear us, O Lord, as we praise. We hear, O Lord, we praise your servant John in his funeral day. We offer you the sacrifice of reconciliation, so that should any stain of sin come to him or any human fault affect him, it may by your loving gift be forgiven and wiped away through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. The Father of us. And let's give thanks to the Lord. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and every day to give thanks. Lord, Holy Father, our light and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him the hope of blessed resurrection has gone, that the soul saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of mortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not in it. And when the third earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with the angels and archangels, thrones and minions, and all the hosts and powers of heaven, who too sing the hymns of glory without any we attain. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Bless us, you come in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Your honor, be holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. May call your life to be a speaker. By sending down your spirit upon them like the new form, so that they may come for us, the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and entered the living age of his passion, he took bread and even thanks for it. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In the way, the supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more gave thanks to David to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. In the mystery of faith, save us, save the world, for by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of death and resurrection, we offer you all the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring heart to the fullness of charity, together as fast as our Pope and I, our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember your servant, John and who, who we have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who was united with your Son in the death of his, and there will also be one of him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who fall asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who died in their mercy were condemned to the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, and with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who please you throughout the ages. We may merit to be co heirs to eternal life. And I pray to glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, <coughs> with him, and in him. O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Amen. So stand in together. Be mindful of faith and hope. We place ourselves into God's hands as we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And deliver us, Lord, we pray for every evil and graciously grant peace in our days. That by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Keep our Lord, Lord, and Lord, and Lord. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I give you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who will live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Now, of God, we take away the sins of the world from our sins. And now, God, take away the sins of the world from our sins. And now, God, take away the sins of the world from our sins.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul will shine. Come up the center aisle on both sides and down by the walls. Very well, house. And the comments once we see the group for those, please come and meet you too.
Me but let me go. When I come to the end of the road and the sun has set for me, I want no rights in a gloom filled room, room, why cry for a soul set free? Miss me a little, but not for long, and not with your head bowed down. Remember the love that we once shared, miss me, but let me go. For this is a journey we all must take, and each must go alone. It's all part of the master's plan, a step on the road to home. When you are lonely and sick of heart, go to the friends you know. Laugh at all the things we used to do. Miss me, but let me go. So it's him speaking his own grief, says the sadness now is part of the happiness now. So <laughs> we grieve because we love. And that is the price. It's the price we pay for love. But the sadness now is part of the happiness then. The happiness remains. Pain remains. We pray. We grieve in hope. The presence of the Lord will be with you in the journey, in the summer, and never leave you. That you grieve in the hope of Christ will bring those happy memories, you know, those really happy songs. You know, you'll hear, you'll cry, you'll cry and cry, and they'll break your heart. But at the same time, they bring you joy and remember the time you spent together. And let that sustain you. So let us pray. Grant we pray, Almighty God, that your son and John, who has journeyed through this world, may now by his sacrifice be cleansed and free from sin, and so see the everlasting joys of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Terry is going to say the words of the Father and the words of the Lord. Good morning, everyone, and thank you for coming here to celebrate Jonathan. First of all, on behalf of Sue, she would like to thank the Anthropology team here at the clinic and also in Washington. She would also like to, also like to thank the Home Care team. She would like especially to thank Kelly and the New World who went above and beyond to care for John in his final days. John was born on the 7th of February 1982. He was number 8 in the family. As we all know John today, he was a saint. <laughs> He was more different as a child. Once he got to speak on him, he was a nightmare for his parents. He brought tennis, toilets, all the furniture, and many, many windows. He even managed to blow the chimney on top of the house. <laughs> to the dismay of the crow he was firing at. <laughs> when I first met with Pixie, John was five years old. He was in school at the time, but he was no straight A student. He couldn't wait to get out of bed. Once he got away, the weekends he started working, he was bumping out stables and breaking horses and cunnings. As he got older, it was machining. His love was diggers, bulldozers, combines, tractors, just to just a few. He tried to manage it with a steering John could not wait to be a pilot, and a great one he was. He followed the work all around the country, but Ireland was enough. 
His first tour was over, so his next venture was up, so off to Australia he went. When he had Australia built, he came back for a second tour. <laughs> and this is where the love story began. John met Sue one Friday evening outside the chapel, and as that always, John got straight to the point. <laughs> With a week in his eye and a spring in his step, Sue and John were a and just two months later, a home was made. Four years later, maybe after he was born, it was the apple of John's eye, and how proud he was that another terror was born and took his body in his heart as well. But his family wasn't complete until another terror with a tiara was born with a tailor, and their family was complete. But then, unfortunately, after many years of happiness, the big seed came from a new door. From then on, they knew that, there was time, that their time was precious. So all their plans were pushed forward and the wedding was on the horizon. John's wish finally came true, seeing Sue in her beautiful white dress. Little did they know, and no surprise, when they opened the door and put out their favourite band of Tom and Paddy's. Were there to greet him, as Sue said to me that they had been saved for their lives. Unfortunately, it wasn't much time left. It was finally chat that four weeks later we came to a close. John was an open father, husband, brother, son, and all around best friend. John was surely to this, even broken hearts and racing minds. So now, go with God. John is he will show you the way where we meet Hanky, Paula, Pixie, Kristen, and Anne. And remember, we love you with all our hearts. Oh my God. I know you kind of upset her by changing names and plans, but you know, the, the hard, heavy day through the stories, I do, do an you know, all the work and do it. And I'm all your assistants. So we stand and we have our final prayers. Foundation and the enjoyment of today, John. So trusting in God, we have prayed together for John, and now we come to last farewell. There is sadness in parting, but we take comfort in the hope that one day we shall see John again and enjoy his friendship. Although his congregation will disperse his sorrow, the mercy of God will gather us together again and enjoy his kingdom, for his console and love and faith of our Lord Jesus Christ. So reminding us of John's baptism, we sprinkle his coffin with holy water. We incense it with, 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 with incense, reminding us that we are temples of the Holy Spirit, created in God's energy of this.
response receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. Receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. Saints of God come to his aid, please, and meet the angels of the Lord. Receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. May Christ, who called you, take to himself, and the angels lead you to Abraham's side. Receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord, and let your light shine upon him. Receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. Let us pray. Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our brother Johnny, and sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, who will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings you bestowed upon Johnny in this life. They are signs to us and your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn towards us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us in the to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and with you and our brother forever. We ask through Christ our Lord. Johnny, may the angels lead you into paradise, the martyrs come and welcome and take you to the holy city, the name of eternal Jerusalem. May the choirs of angels welcome you and lead you to Abraham's side. For Lazarus is poor no longer, may you find eternal rest. In peace now, let's take our brother to his place of rest. <laughs> Thank you. 